Time Force, that mid-ass season. What is blood yapping about? Relax, I'm joking. Power Rangers Time Force is one of the greatest Power Rangers seasons of all time. Episode 1, Nadira breaks Rancic out of custody by destroying three soon-to-be participation award-winning Power Rangers. And Rancic tries to go back in time, Alex pulls up, and Rancid goes on ahead to extremely brutally murder him. Conveniently, Jen is right there to watch it all happen. That's just episode one. That's crazy. Now let's go aesthetics. We got the morphers. Them shits is ass, buddy. There's just three buttons and an oval that lights up green. Congratulations, it's ass. It literally has no other functions other than communication and morphing. That's it. Some of y'all are saying it's top 10? Get out of here. But the Quantum Rangers Morpher, it has flavor. It's red and black and has a built-in AI that can show you how to defeat certain monsters. That's tough. And it controls the Q-Rex, the only Zord of this season that actually matters. Mode red is ass. Mode blue is ass cheeks. Time Shadow is okay, but it's still whack. The Q-Rex saved the Zords this season, I swear to God. It starts off as a T-Rex that turns into its own Megazord and shoots missiles out of his hand. Come on, gang. Then we got the Time Force suits. Oh my God, it's mid. They're basic as hell. They just got Aang's arrow on a chest and then a white chest piece and then their respective Ranger colors. <laughs> And then their helmets. Wes has the avatar arrow on his head. Jen has a heart. But the rest of them, throw it away. Especially trips. That shit is ugly. If I become a ranger and I become the green time force ranger, I'm quitting. I'm not putting on that suit. But the quantum ranger suit, congratulations. It carries again. You got the black and red with the spiky arrows giving it flavor. It's tough. And we got their weapons. The chrono sabers are actually tough. But those big ass bazookas that they pull out their ass, what the hell is that? It's terrible. Especially when they combine it into a big ass box head bazooka. It's ugly. What the hell is that? Oh, jokes aside, who the fuck came up with that shit, bro? You know who carries again eric the quantum ranger with the quantum defender you got sword mode and blaster mode come on gang that shit is tough one of the best weapons in all of power rangers wes just wants to do something with his life that has nothing to do with his father because his father is actually a millionaire asshole give me my money and mr collins just wants wes to take over his business but wes does not want to do that at all then this story becomes a black person's canon event and mr collins wants nothing to do with his son wes then wes fights to join the ranger team so he can finally do something good that does not include his father then wes becomes the heart of this team and everybody loves wes especially Jen, she loves him. Like if she wasn't engaged last week to a man that died in her arms, but we gonna get to that when we talk about Jen. Then we got Eric, who grew up in the slums. That broke poor nigga. Everything Eric does this season is legit to just piss off Wes. He hates Wes because Wes grew up rich and had everything handed to him on a silver platter. So Eric becomes a menace and does everything to legit just piss off Wes. He joined the Silver Guardians to get closer to Wes's dad. He became a ranger because he found out that Wes was a ranger. And when Eric's on that battlefield, it's either he's beating your ass or he's being a nuisance to your ass or he's beating up the monsters. Bro, Eric is legit racist. I love Eric. Eric. Eric was legit trying to end a monster's life that was not evil. He said it moves like a monster. It looks like a monster. So just get rid of it. I love Eric. And throughout the season, Wes was slowly getting to Eric. So Eric was softening it up a little bit. Until Eric spewed his heart out about Wes. Creating one of the greatest moments in all the Power Rangers. Where Wes and Eric are having a little back and forth. And Eric is using him as a therapy session for the first time. This nigga gets help and talks about his problems. And they legit hash it out to the point where Eric is legit jumping in front of bullets to save Wes's life. Now that's character development. Jen is a hoe. She's also the greatest pink ranger of all time, but she's still a hoe. Jen, in the first episode, you got proposed to, and you said yes, and you watched this man die in your arms. You couldn't grieve for a month. You couldn't grieve for two months, three months, a year. As soon as you laid eyes on Wes, you were in love. Like if Wes doesn't look just like Alex, that's not weird. Like I understand having a type, but they look exactly the same, gang. He unlocked the DNA morpher, meaning he has the same DNA as Alex. They're related, buddy. Now you've been ran through by the family tree. She belongs to the streets. I don't think she really liked Wes. I think she used Wes as a coping mechanism to get over Alex. But Jen is still one of the greatest Pink Rangers of all time. She watched her fiance die in her arms, then planned the greatest get back of all time while being the first ever Pink Ranger leader. And the episode she was supposed to fight the catfish monster, whatever his name is, let me tell you one thing. Time Force, they're cops, pigs, ops. 5-0, the boys. So everything Jen did this episode was police brutality. Time Force Rangers do not kill their monsters. They capture them in little time capsules. So when he brought up Alex, she went berserk. She started wilding on him with the chrono sabers and then she whipped out that big ass, ugly ass bazooka and tried to blow him up. But luckily, the other pigs of the season stopped her. But then she spinned back for more police brutality. She really put a pole in this man's face talking about why well, I should blow your face off right now. What? I need her badge number everything she's getting fired but she's still the best female ranger of all time let's go we got the other three rangers who are legit just happy to be there there to collect participation awards because they've done nothing this entire season that contributes to the story lucas was just there he was just in the background trying to be cool driving his little nascar and fake dating nadira he contributed nothing to the story get the right. fuck out of here 
out of here. Trip, you contributed a little bit to the story. You made Eric stop being racist and soften him up a little bit. Other than that, you were glazing West the entire season. You're just like Kevin from Samurai. Please get off that man's nutsack. Go find you a woman or something. Like you know you're whack when kids don't even want you as a costume. You are useless. Katie, at least you were affected by going back in time. You were homesick. And I still don't understand how Power Ranger sent a black female back in time and she did not receive 5,000 lashes. He struck the whip. <laughs> Clearly Power Rangers is not reading their history books because if they did, <laughs> they would have never sent her back there. Katie, Trip, or Lucas? Three Rangers that are completely useless and just there for participation awards. Time Force has some of the best villains of all time. We're gonna start off with the main villain, Rancic. He legit set the tone of Time Force. From episode one, he legit murdered Alex in front of his fiance. The way that he tormented Jen this entire season was crazy. And one crazy thing about Rancic is that he's evil for a reason. He's been neglected by the human race for being a mutant. He could pull his bones out his bodies and use them as weapons. Ew. Rancic is so disgusting. I can see why the humans neglected him. When his mask falls off, I legit do not look at the TV screen. That shit is ugly, bro. Oh Yo, Rantic legit bodied the Time Force Rangers. Rantic legit had to give up for the Rangers to actually survive. And the reason he gave up is because of Nadira, his daughter. Nadira is just a basic female who wears Uggs in the summertime, drinks Starbucks, and goes shopping. But she's evil, but she's not really evil. It's only evil because she listens to her father. We find out that she has a different side of her because of Frax. He started off as a human called Dr. Ferric. He watched with his own eyes Rancic getting attacked by a venomous monster. And then he went over there to go help him, creating a serum that would cure the venom. But since Rancic was a mutant, he had to keep taking them. That's why you always see him bubbling up in the show. It's nasty. Then one day Rancic pulled up, he grabbed the full briefcase of the serum and just decided to destroy Dr. Ferric's lab and him with it. With Dr. Ferric inside the lab that just blew up, he's now building himself into a robot to also get one of the greatest getbacks of all time. Frax legit stayed on Rancic's team the entire season just so he could get his getback. And what he did was he destroyed all the vials that kept Rancic alive while he needed them the most. And then when he revealed himself that he was Dr. Ferric like a dumbass instead of, you know, offing them off in his sleep, Rancic ended up destroying him. Again, Rancic legit completely destroyed Dr. Ferric by turning Frax into a completely full machine. Then Frax ended up failing to the Rangers. Rancic kicks him and then he just falls apart, bro. That shit was actually sad. Time Force has some great villains, man. Especially the script writer. How the hell you send a black girl back in time? Make it make sense. I believe we should bring back the whipping post from slavery. 